show. Chores all done, cows in the stall. So settle back for a hee-haw, y'all. Here it is. <laughs> Money can buy happiness, too. Yesterday, I went out and bought a whole jug full. Here's Roy Clark and the whole hee-haw gun. You'll be happy to know that I'm going to give you a clean bill of health. Well, I don't care what kind of bill you give me. I'm not going to pay it in half. I'd, I'd run out of it. Oh, no. <laughs> A letter, folks, in the mailbox. Imagine. It's from Miss Shannon Sewell of Louisville, Mississippi. Uh -huh. It says, Dear Buck, I'm a big fan of many pearls, and me and my sister Kelly have an argument going over what size shoe she wears. Well, I'll tell it to you like Aunt Minnie tells it to me. She says that her actual shoe size is an 8, but a 9 feels so good that she usually buys a size 10. <laughs> that is when a wear shoe which ain't what you'd call regular. <laughs> you know, Roy, I'm suffering from lumbago. You are? At your age? How old are you, anyway? Twenty-six. <laughs> you almost be... You... <laughs> you know, Roy, I'm coming down with a bad case of the lumbago. You are? At your age? How old are you anyway? Twenty-six. You all also suffering from a bad case of you. <laughs> you know, Roy, I'm coming down with a case of spinal meningitis. <laughs> you are? At your age? How old are you anyway, Junior? Twenty-six. You're also coming down with a loss of memory. <laughs> tells me that there are bigger things in life than money. Uh-huh. Bills, for instance. <laughs> you know, Misty, I never could figure out how you made all them good grades in spelling class. Oh, it was simple, Archie. My handwriting was so bad, the teacher never did know if I could spell or not. <laughs> I'll swan it. That joke didn't bear repeating, much less repeating. <laughs> History time now. Who can tell me who Francis Scott Key was? Jenny? Uh, 
He was the only man who knew all the words to the Star Spangled Banner? <laughs> now for our geography lesson class, who knows what an island is? Lee? I do, teacher. An island is a place where the bottom of the ocean sticks up through the water. <laughs> If I could just get up enough steam, I'd leave. Here's the singing ranger, Hank Snow. to think it could be time I'll open the door and at last I am free I don't hurt anymore no use to deny I wanted to die the day you said we were through Somehow that I cared so before, and it's wonderful now. I don't hurt I just can't figure it out. Our black cows are eating twice as much as our white cows. I don't know why either. Unless it's because we got twice as many black cows as we have white cows. <laughs> Here's Buck Owens and the Buckaroos. the highway I'd been trying to catch a ride hungry and thirsty as a bear not a penny in my pocket and I'd ran out of pride so I thought I'd try and bum myself a beer went up stepped the well-known posse staring down at me a big old shiny badge pinned on his vest. He said, if you ain't got no money, boy, and you ain't got no job, then I'm placing you under arrest. Or you can get out of town before sundown, and don't you never come back. Take your town the rings and your guitar strings, Move on down the track Don't like the way that you comb your hair The way that you draw you all And if you're not out of town before sundown You won't get out of town at all Well, I 
hitchhike down the Phoenix. I was following the sun. Prettiest place I think I've ever seen. I met a nice young lady, but how was I to know that pretty thing was only 17? Then I heard the sirens screaming, and I saw the red lights gleaming. A sight that fills the bravest heart with fear. And that old sheriff didn't stutter when to me these words he uttered. Boy, don't let the sun set on you here. You'd better get out of town before sundown. And don't you never come back. Take your tambourines and your guitar strings and move on down the track. Don't like the way that you comb your hair, the way that you draw you all. And if you're not out of town before sundown, you won't get out of town at all. Never talk to me. I don't understand you. Other men bring their troubles home. I don't have to bring mine home. They're here waiting for me. <laughs> it's their anniversary. Their 800th fight. <laughs> In troubled times like these, I like to think back on the words my younger brother Waldo spoke. In 1903, he said, Goo goo go 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 go. Itchy goochy goochy. What did you expect him to say? He was only 24 at the time. <laughs> hey, Junior. Hello, right. Hey, Grandpa. String? Well, I guess old Charlie's gone to the house, huh? Yeah. Well, to tell you about my train trip the other day, took a little trip. Oh. Yeah, boy, well, I never saw so many things happen on a train ride. We even had a robbery. Oh, I didn't think they had them anymore. Oh, no, I didn't either. My granny's, we did this one old big old handsome boy, about six foot two. He walked on the train there and jerked out a 45 and shot up in the ceiling a couple of times. He said, I'm Jesse James, and this is a holdup. <clears throat> said, I'm going to rob all the men and kiss all the women. That's one old fellow raised up. He said, look here, Jesse James. He said, you can have my money, but you ain't going to kiss my wife. His wife grabbed him and jerked him down. She said, you shut your mouth and let Jesse rob this train. <laughs> and, and there was a man on the train, and his man and his daughter is what oh. it was. And uh, after the robbers over, looked down at his daughter's hand, she still had on her diamond rings. He says, well, I can't understand that. So those rings are valuable. I said, why didn't you get your rings? She said, well, I saw what was happening, so I took my rings off and hid them in my mouth. <laughs> the, old man, the old man said, Lord, I wish we'd have had your mother along. We could have saved the luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a lady got on the train there. She had a little boy with her, about six or seven years old. And uh, I have to say this, though, in all honesty, the kid was ugly. That was the ugliest kid I ever saw, and we all remarked about it around, you know, about how ugly the kid was. Of course, uh, we just talking among ourselves. Nobody's going to walk up and tell a mother she has an ugly child. Well, I sure wouldn't. It is nobody except this one drunk. He came staggering down the aisle. He saw this kid, and he said, Lady, is that your kid? She said, Yes, it is. He said, Well, I hate to have to tell you this, but you've got an ugly kid on your hands. <laughs> He said, now, it's no sin to be ugly, but this kid's overdone it. <laughs> you know, I never saw a woman so mad in my life. She started uh, ranting and raving, and the conductor came through. She said, I'm going to sue this railroad for every dime I can get out of it. She said, I've been insulted. Conductor said, wait just a minute, lady. I don't know what happened, but whatever it was, we'll make it up to you. Said, you go back to the diner there and get the biggest steak we have, champagne. All the trimmings, and we'll pay for it. And if that ain't enough, we'll even try to find a banana for your monkey there. <laughs> yep, there's no getting around it. When it comes to cutting hair, you've got to take your hat off to old Archie. <laughs>
a big pot of goulash filled to the brim, and a batch of spoon bread to please any whim. Turnips from the garden cooked in cured pork meat. Homemade chocolate pie. My, what a treat. Yum, yum. It's my friend Barbie Benton. People smile and tell me I'm the lucky one. And we've just begun. I think I'm going to have a son. Free as a dove, conceived in love. The sun is gonna shine above. And even though we ain't got money, I'm so in love with you, honey. Everything will bring a chain of love. And in the morning when I rise, bring a tear of joy to my eyes and tell. Cup. Drink it up. Love him and he'll bring you luck. And if you find he has your mind, better take him home. Yeah, don't you live alone. Try to see what lovers own. villains, Claude Strawberry is on the scene of rippling rhyming. He's the dean. Oh, the saint of rhyming must be pleased as punch. Ooh, ooh. Mm. A bear escaped from the circus one day. He came into our yard just to play. But people came from miles away when they heard what my father had to say. Daddy really was quite a card. He said, somebody's bear in our backyard. <laughs> Wearing monogram pajamas seems a little silly to me. I mean, if a feller don't know who he is, by the time he goes to bed, he might as well forget it. <laughs> I finally done it. I built it. Three years. Three years I built my... Look at it. <laughs> oh, my airplane. Excessive misery. 
situation makes our hearts break. Oh, to have a steady job, we sure do hate. We could hold a job, I think, if it wasn't for one thing. Yeah, if it wasn't for all the damn blame work it takes. <laughs> Lisa, do you think it'd be all right if I kissed your hand? Gordy, please keep in mind, there is a proper place for everything. <laughs> From Cornfield County's Garden of New Talent, here's Gamble and more. Down by the Green River where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking. Mr. Peabody's cold train then hauled it away. Now tell him, brother. When I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. There's a backwards old town there that's often remembered so many times that my memories are born. Take me back to me in that county Down by the green river where paradise lay Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Mr. Peabody's cold train and all it away Sometimes we travel right down the green river To an abandoned old prison down by Avery Hill when the air smell like snakes, Lord, we'd shoot with our pistols. Empty pop bottles was all we would kill. Daddy, won't you take me back to Newton, the county? Down by the Green River where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking. To be by this gold train to hold it. Old company came with the world's largest shovel And they tortured the timber and stripped all the land They dug for their coal till the land was forsaken Then they rode it all down as the progress of man Daddy, won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise lay Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late in asking Salutes my hometown, Brooklyn, Nova Scotia. Population 1,245. Salute! <laughs> Land of Goshen and for heaven's sake. We're going to take a station break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. We'll be right back. Troubled with halitosis. Oh, gee, that's too bad. How did he catch it? Oh, he ain't got it. He can't spell it. <laughs> hey, what's Archie's chief worry, Buck? Well, money, I guess. But he ain't got no money. Uh, he hadn't? Well, and that's his worry. <laughs>
you think Misty is? Oh, I'd say somewhere in her mid flirties. <laughs> snore so bad, Buck, that I'd wake myself up, but I cured it. How'd you do it? Oh, I sleep in another room now. <laughs> you know, it takes Gordy a day and a night to tell a story. He'd make a good bookkeeper. How come? He'd never be short on his account. <laughs> Take that right there. Okay. Yeah. Gordy, Gordy, did you hear me? There's a customer. Be quiet and they'll go away. <laughs> great day for fishing, ain't it, String? Any time a man to fishing, they're all great days. String, have you ever caught your limit here? Yeah, last winter, I was ice fishing. I caught two seven-pounders yeah. and a mess of one-pounders right out here in the middle. Well, did they fry up pretty nice? I don't know. I never get them through the hole in the eye. <laughs> yeah, I got a bite, Jerry. Pull him in, Brad. Pull him in. Pull him in. Stay with him. Stay with him. Stay with him. Order, and uh, what was it you wanted? Your Honor, I request that you grant my client a new trial. I've uncovered new evidence. Of what nature? Well... I just found out my client has an extra $600, and I just found out about it this morning. <laughs> ah, friends, junior samples here. Now, that night, if you yes. <laughs> junior, just try it one more time, and you'll get it right. Hi, ah, friend, junior samples here. Now, that I might ask if we sell foreign cars here at Sample Juice Car Lot. Well, I'm here to tell you that we do. Let me show you, for instance. This here little English job is one I'm proud of. You ask how I know it's an English car, because I speak English and I can drive it. That's how. And first of thought, I reckon it makes it a southern car. Don't y'all remember now? The number to call is BR549. <laughs> I don't think old Junior likes his television work. At least his overalls look unimpressed. <laughs> Here's the singing ranger, Hank Snow. I fill my old car up with gas. Not to Chicago, I always go in. Just rode ten miles and turned around I couldn't leave without you knowing I had to see you one last time And be with you once before I go To talk with you just one more time Chicago Still is there something you would say To make me change my mind and stay But I guess if it's gonna be this way Then I guess I'm bound on to Chicago Still, 
there's something you'd say to make me change my mind and stay. But I guess it is gotta be this way. Then I guess I'm bound off to Chicago. Ah, Lord, that woman done made a fool of little old man. And I'm gonna be moving on up to Chicago, yeah. Grandpa and Minnie's kitchen, because Grandpa's baking a cake. How right you are, darling, dearest. My cakes are so beautiful, I hate to eat them. Grandpa, you can't have your cake and eat it, too. I cliche. I avoid cliches, like the plague. Well, it's true. You can't have your cake and eat it, too. Sure you can. Bake two cakes. And one Doctor, doctor, yes? Grandpa Jones is outside just complaining about his left leg a aching. Well, tell him not to worry about it. It's probably just old age. Okay. Uh-uh. That can't be it. His right leg is just as old, and it don't hurt him none. <laughs> he haw salutes Birdvale, Pennsylvania. Population, 70. <laughs> Ferguson here with your K-O-R-N on your spot news. Just to let you know that other people's is on the spot just like yourself. A Berwick Slinger, prominent local down and out, is trying to get up and at him again. Now, Burr, he wants a job. Salary, no object, just enough to keep body and soul apart. And he got offered one driving a wheelbarrow, but old Berwick, he ain't too bright at handling machinery. But he's been reading all the classifiable advertisements in the newspaper. And yesterday, he come round to the office applying for a job he says they had right there on the front page. Two men wanted for indecent assault. <laughs> now, Congressman Garnet McPhail, our House representative up there in Washington, has hit the national headlines again with his plan for to get rid of your downtown traffic, traffic problem. <laughs> Says Garnet, the only way to solve your automobile indigestion in our big cities is for to have all your traffic lights at every corner turn red and keep them that way. <laughs> there was a big crowd gathered around Arch Deadman's locker at your Main Street YMCA when it was found out before the handball game that Arch was wearing a pink girdle with blue rosettes on it. <laughs> Now, the fellas asked Arch how long he'd been wearing the girdle, and he says ever since his wife discovered the darn thing in the glove compartment of his car. <laughs> and here's a tip for you mothers having trouble raising up a young boy. If you want your son to have respect for the persons of other people, there is no better way than to get the young Tad a real live dog for his birthday. There's just no end to the things a dog can teach a young boy. Loyalty, perseverance, finding your way home, and even learning to turn around three times before lying down. Here's Roy Clark. Well, I scorched your favorite pan this morning Trying to make some pancakes Spilled the grease and had to stop and mop the floor Sat there like a little baby Crying in my cornflakes I don't think I can take it anymore Baby, come home Baby, come home This is the lonesomest lonesome ever known Late last night I woke up trembling with my arms wrapped around your pillow and a lump as big as Texas in my throat So I sit there in the dark and played my guitar till the sun came up and wrote the saddest song I ever wrote Baby come home This is the lonesomest lonesome 
to protect myself, I have acquired a supply of hand grenades. Now I can regale you with nuggets of wisdom without fear of reprisal. When danger approaches, I simply pull out the pin and then count down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, four, three, two, one. Bad. All men are bad. But Aunt Minnie, what about Roy Clark? Well, now he ain't too bad. <laughs> well, I do sort of stand out if you don't compare me to too much. You went off and joined the women's lib movement. You marched and you screamed for equality. But I cannot see a bit of improvement. Acting like monkeys that live in a tree. Well, oh well, you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over and I thought I'd found true love. You met another and yet you were gone. <laughs> Empty Arms Hotel. I want five rooms for six weeks, then three rooms for four weeks, 11 rooms for two weeks, and six rooms for five weeks. Now, how much is that going to cost? Five rooms, six mm -hmm. weeks, three for four, 11 for two, five rooms, six weeks. Six rooms for five weeks. Uh-huh, right, six for five. That's 24 times five, 42, three times four, 11 times 14 times 24, take away five, plus six times five, plus 32, that's plus tax, that's six heart. In $56.48. That's too much. Make it three rooms for two weeks, seven rooms for 11 days, and three rooms for a week. And how much is that? Well, uh, let's see. Three into two plus seven times 11 over three times seven plus tax. $1,432.18. Still too much. Make it one room for a week, three rooms for three days, and one room for a night. Okay, that's times seven plus three and one plus one. It's 68.42. Too much. How about one room for tonight? Let's see. Take away three times 24 plus seven, carry the six. Subtract four times three, carry the eight plus one. We owe you $18. I'll take it. Here's your, money. Here's your key. Did you hear the one about the obtrusionist's daughter? No. no. What happened? Two glasses and she made a spectator out of herself. Now try it again, Junior, and this time try to get it right. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the obtrusionist's daughter? <laughs> No, it's like this. Did you hear the one about the optician's daughter? Did you hear the one about the optician's daughter? No, what Two glasses and she made a spectator out of herself. What's happening? Not drunk is he who from the floor can rise again and drink once more. But drunk is he who flatly lies and cannot either drink or rise. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, here's Diana Trask. veterinarian. <laughs> he called me a jackass. Well, don't stand for it. What should I do? Make him prove it. <laughs> yeah, but remember this, Roy. A fool and his money are soon parted. Yeah, but they get invited to a lot of places first. <laughs> <laughs> they, they say Archie is really good to his wife. Yeah, he hardly ever goes home. Well, I'm so full of pills, the doctor can't operate. I keep a rolling off the table. <laughs> can't you get your bunch to feed on that corn for a change? <laughs> My wife's an iceberg. Only 10% of her shows on the surface. 90% of her is hidden. When I married her, I got what I didn't see. <laughs> A girdle is a device that prevents figures from becoming facts. Here's Buck Owens and Buddy Allen. Everybody always picking on me. That's him on his knees. I know that's him. Yelling seven, come on, never down in the boys' gym. Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown. He's a clown. That Charlie Brown. He's gonna get caught. Yes, you wait and see. Why is everybody always picking on me? Who's always writing on the wall? Who's always scooping in the halls? Who's always throwing spitballs? Guess who? Oh, me? Yeah, you. Not me. Walks in the classroom, cool and slow. Who called the English teacher daddy? Oh, Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown. He's a clown. That Charlie Brown. Gonna get caught. 
everybody always picking on me. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week on Heat.